Today I am going to be catching a fish and taxiderming it in the same video. Uh, before we start this guys, I have very little experience in this. I have taxidermied a total of two fish ever, but I do know the process, I do know what to do. All we got is a bobber, small hook, and some night crawlers. There's fish all over the place today. We just had a big rain yesterday. I know they are in here, I did catch them last time. Last time I caught them about here. Bit. And missed one. Let's see if we can get them to commit here. Got them that time. Oh yeah, here we go. Oh, perfect size. Perfect size too. There we go. Beautiful beautiful colors on the belly he does look a little beat up and that's probably just because he's a canal fish he is a little skinny i have myself a cooler since i'm catching small fish i'm just using a little rag here and you're gonna dip this in water and then you're gonna wrap them up i've never fallen completely into the canal i've been pretty close though make a little fish burrito and let's see if like, we can catch our uh, second one here we'll try to get a little bit bigger one this time got another Got another, another good one. Uh, I think we'll go for a bigger one. Little canal bluegill. He gets to live today. Picked up, got him. Oh, this feels better. This feels better. That is a catfish. Okay. A couple bluegill and a catfish on the bobber. I guess that's okay, whatever. Oh, come on. Sank again, got him that time. Got him that time. I think this is the biggest one we're gonna get out of here. All right, let's get this one wrapped up, put in the cooler. I'm gonna fish a little bit longer because the bite's kind of good. We'll meet you guys back at the house when we start this whole freaking process, man. So this is the first one I ever did, and uh, it was a lot of fun to do. I know my paint job is not the best. This was my first time ever using an airbrush, so this is how the first one came out. Here was the second one I am still currently working on. This is the tilapia. Have not painted this one yet. That is the last step. You guys are here to watch the bluegill, so let's get started on that right now. Hey. All right, so there's our first one that we caught, and here is our second one. Decent sized bluegill, nothing crazy. Our first step is to get measurements of these guys and measure the girth in different areas of their body. So I have a spare piece of cardboard that I'm going to trace each of them on and then uh, put in the measurements later on. We can put that to the side. We're just gonna cut a line straight down his body, right this way. Now here comes the hard part. All the meat inside of this fish needs to come out both sides. Some fish you need to be very careful because their scales will come off. That is not what you want to happen. Uh, but we have our bag here for our guts. So let's get started on this part. Here we go. Also another good tool is borax. You put the fish in it and it'll kind of keep everything together. Also helps with your grip a lot. So I think I'm gonna grab some real quick. Most of that off of both sides there. We're going to use our scissors and we're gonna cut up the spine in there and start taking it, taking the meat out one chunk at a time. We have gotten a fair amount through this fish here. We're gonna keep chugging along here. We got all the meat out of here. And you really just wanna get as much as you possibly can. We even got up in the brain cavity. All we're gonna do right now is get the eyes out, uh, which is definitely required. Total, this has probably taken me about a little over an hour. All right, our next step is to put it in the solution. That is a solution of denatured alcohol and water, 50-50. 
and this fish is going to sit in there for at least a day. Since he's pretty little, we could probably do a day, and then he will be ready for mounting. So we're going to get started on this fish right here. I am not going to film it, but you guys know the process. All right, everybody, welcome back. It has been a few days we let this fish soak. We let both of these fish soak in the solution, so this is what they are looking like here. Both skins have toughened up significantly, and uh, that is definitely what you want right there. We're going to be carving the foam that is gonna be going in these fish here. You guys saw before we traced our outlines. So for these, we have the dimensions on there, we have the girth, and we have the height that the fish is gonna be. This carving foam is what's gonna be inside this fish after we are done. So we really need to take our time on this one, make sure we get the right dimensions. But first, let's trace both of these and let's cut them out. All right, we have finished our tracings. So that is what we now have right there. And we're going to cut these out carefully. It's really easy to like cut at an angle and mess it up, but we're gonna do our best here. All right, there's foam carving number one right there. All right, there's our second one. Here's our first one. I know these are not perfect right now, but as we whittle them away and we uh, take off the corners and stuff like that, we're gonna shape them as best as we can to these fish. This part is fairly time consuming. May do a little bit of time lapse and then turn off the camera just because it, uh, it takes a while sometimes to get it right on, so. The goal is to get it as close as you can. Like I said before, I'm no professional. We just sanded it a little more outside. We have it pretty thin now. This should be just about it here. All right, we got some standard little pins here. We're just gonna stick them in the fish to hold the shape and then we're gonna get our needle ready and we'll start sewing this guy up. All right guys, that is our bluegill right there. We fixed them up the best way that we can, and uh, we got everything pretty much even. We don't have very much space in the back, which is a good thing. So basically, we're just gonna take our 50 pound braid. People use 30, 20, but this is all I had on me, and we're just gonna sew this fish all the way up right here, and then uh, we can start drying. Fish is officially sewn up on the back. Here's what it looks like. Remember, the back does not matter because that is the part that you are not going to see. I have a little stand here. This is actually something I use in anatomy class. And boom, we got a little stand. Anyways, going to take your pins and you're just gonna pin the fins exactly how you want them to dry. For this one, I think I'll have them flared out. I think flared out looks the best. And you basically just do that with all the fins. I'm pretty much gonna have mine all flared out. This is what we got. So this is our bluegill. That is how he was going to dry right there. But anyways, we're gonna let our fish dry in front of the fan. I'm gonna get started on this next bluegill. We will catch up with you guys when we get to the next step. Here we go. All right guys, welcome back. It has been a few days since we started these fish. They are now dried out. There we go. That is what we're looking like. So today we are going to be touching that up we're also going to be reinforcing these fins, uh, meaning making them tougher, because right now they're like very frail. So for this, we're going to be using clear siliconized caulk. Oh. We're basically just going to paint this right onto the fins. 
So we're gonna get a little bit here. This is gonna make the fins more flexible, less prone to breaking. You just wanna be very delicate. Okay, so for all the repairs and putting the eye in and everything, epoxy sculpt. So you mix these two together, it is like half resin and then half clay. We have that little corner in the tail. We're then going to make that look a little more realistic. And now for the eye socket. Got our eye set in there. Once we paint it, you won't even be able to tell the difference. Um, it really all comes down to painting, honestly. Painting is one of the toughest parts. The other thing you definitely need to do is the lips. The lips definitely shrink, as you guys can uh, tell there. Basically, no lips. Rebuilt some of those lips. The lips fixed up right now, they were really bony. But that basically does it for this guy right here. He is ready to be uh, dried out again. We're gonna let all this stuff dry. Uh, then we're gonna seal them, and then we're gonna paint them. While this guy dries out, I'm gonna do this other bluegill right here. He's definitely gonna take a bit more work. We will catch up with you when we do the final step, which is painting this bluegill right here. All right, everybody, we have our fish ready to be painted. I have been dreading this part for a while. Painting is not my strong suit, but uh, you kind of just got to bite the bullet and do it. For reference, I'm using this paint schedule reference photo. There's really not too many photos, but I'm going to be trying my best. All right, guys, into painting. So this paint schedule basically tells you what colors to put on first, and then towards the end, they're supposed to blend together fairly well. They don't tell you to blend them though, so you need to know that by yourself. So here we're starting with some white, going into some yellow, and then they called for some green, and I honestly think this kind of just threw off the whole thing for me. As you can see, after we put on some black green, I'm like, wait, this is too dark. It should not look like this. So I ended up cleaning these fish and starting the paint job over again, as you can see. Uh, so we're starting a little bit lighter this time with some white and some yellow. And it's coming together a little bit better this time. I decided to lose the green and just stick with the, uh, the black green. We ended up losing a fin on the right bluegill, which I tried to find forever and mount back on, but I just couldn't. But hey guys, we're novice level, all right? <laughs> we're novice level. I'm gonna show you guys everything. I'm gonna keep it real. But eventually my camera dies. My camera dies. I add a few more details. I add the gloss coat. And this is what we came up with. Boom, that is what we came up with. We made them a little prettier than they were supposed to be. I know they were canal fish. They were a little uglier than this, but uh, overall, I think it turned out okay. This is the only the second fish I've ever painted, um, but I really hope you guys enjoyed. This one was really fun to make. So thank you guys for watching, and we will see you in the next video.